Hello friends and channel subscribers, Greg here from Brisbane again with another uncut, unbiased, no bull video. Today is a very controversial subject, lifestyle, diet and cancer. Please stick until end of the video because you don't want to miss out to know little bits that may help you to avoid or treat the terrible, terrible disease of 21st century. I would like to emphasize Everything that I say in this video, I'm not trying to treat or diagnose disease. I'm not a doctor. And this video comes from a serious, tr believe, trust me, I'm not a doctor. I'm not. And also, if you like this video or any other videos on my channels and you believe they're helpful, please subscribe to my channel. Please hit that uh, like and notification button so you don't miss any of my future videos. So let's start with beginning where i would like to make sure that everyone knows that you cannot prevent cancer so no one chooses cancer cancer is not direct does not have direct relation with how healthy you're eating or how good you're exercising or anything like that Cancer is abnormal cell division into tumors, right? I don't want to go into any biological reasons. And also, I would like to say that it's very unfair to put all cancers under one umbrella. So I'm coming from a point of view when I read a lot of scientific research. I'm part of scientific community that trying to understand and decipher uh, how cancers work, how they behave and everything like that. I'm not a doctor. I don't want to I don't want to hint on anything. But what I would like to say is there is a big difference how you can behave before someone gets cancer and what to do when someone unfortunately may get cancer, right? So there's a certain ways to reduce exposure to elements that will cause cancer and also reduce exposure to elements that will accelerate cancer if cancer already in the body. So let's start from the beginning. I would like to start with environmental factors. Um, you may not believe, but water, food, <clears throat> as a food pollution, not food quality or quantity, food pollution um, will make the really big impact on cancer. The reason is that so water is basically, we don't have any clean water now. Water is recycled, reused, uh, treated with chemicals, supplied through the pipes, that some of the pipes 100 years old. Another way, most of the environments are contaminated. So try to drink clean water, and I'm not implying drink water from a bottle because the water that trapped in a plastic could different set of properties as well. About food pollution, right? look how we grow our, the, our vegetables and how we grow our cattle so it doesn't matter whether you're vegetarian or diet or you know or, or sorry or carnivore you eat only uh, a meat diet basically every industry will have chemicals and pollutant that may cause cancer right so um there's no one single diet i will say oh it's better to prevent cancer or or reduce cancer uh, in a way of nutrition itself as as uh, where it comes from it's most important try to eat organic try to eat food without pesticides herbicides and you significantly reduce your chances to get cancer another factor that not many people think because every time we go into shop we think about how get cheaper faster stronger delivered but you know we're surrounded by environment most of the time we we spend either in the office or at home. We're surrounded by furniture. Most of the furniture by uh, modern standards would have a uh, uh, fire retardant in, in the furniture. Those are harsh chemicals that are causing cancer. Let's think about our clothes, right? They chemically treated to be certain color, certain shape and everything else. So when you choose your cloth, Try to choose better fabrics, better production, 
and try to understand where your cloth coming from and your furniture coming from. So that way you expose yourself to other chemicals and masters that we touching with our skin and inhale and basically surround 24 seven, especially in the winter when we've got all the windows closed and we basically breathe what we flip from a carpets, from a furniture, from anything else. So those environmental factors. And the last one is basically what I call lifestyle choices. So you most likely won't be able to influence your food supply, water supply. You may not influence your furniture supply or your clothes supply, but you definitely, definitely have huge impact on your lifestyle. The big one that many people don't know, it's cosmetics. It's so much pollution and, and uh, cosmetics that, that, that we buy these days. Read the label, try to translate what's, what's on, on, on a package and you will see so many cancerogens and other problem um, particular items in cosmetics. Then you got smoking, alcohol and illicit substances that people consume. All of that is extremely cancer inducing. So I believe there are some choices to make and it's up to people how they make those choices. So why I injected diet into the sense of cancer? So things above are kind of obvious, but when it comes to diet, it's not obvious. When we think about cancer, basically I'm thinking, thinking cutting out or chemotherapy, and then that's it. We just basically, um, in the fate of life, that is not true. That is not true because Cancer, the way it develops, the way it uh, evolves, the way it threatens the body, it's important. The cancer thrives on glucose, fructose, and carbohydrates in general. It's been shown in studies that people that uh, consume or live ketogenic lifestyle, they reduce their chances to get cancer and actually becoming cancer free after treatment in 90% of the time. And I'm not saying that you should not go into therapy. Uh, medical treatment is most important bit. But if you do medical treatment and don't change your lifestyle, the remission is 50%. When you adapt with better lifestyle, the cure is close to 90% in most of the cancers right now. So basically think what is your primary source of energy. If it's glucose, if it's anything to do with, you know, simple carbs or carbs in general, please change your diet. And by the way, I, I include a link below my uh, link to glucose and fructose video, as well as a video about diabetes because diabetes are most exposed to cancer consequences as well. So, just a reminder, how glucose as a primary fuel for cancer ends up in the blood. The first one is obvious, eating carbohydrates. So basically carbohydrates getting broken into sugars and that's how glucose ends up in the blood. The second one is stress. Stress is actually one of the biggest sources of glucose in the bloodstream for now. The life is becoming stressful. And, 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 you know, if you think about this, when people believe they're getting cancer, they eat not well and they stressed, right? So it basically doubling your chance of progressing cancer, you know, further. The third one is poor sleep. What happens with poor sleep? Um, it triggers a um, generation of hormone called cortisol. Cortisol will trigger uh, glucose development and in a bloodstream again if you're not eating well if you're stressed it could be a result in a poor sleep so see how easy with lifestyle choices give yourself opportunity if you're stressed if you're not eating well if you got poor sleep your chances to beat cancer literally diminishing and then obesity Obesity is a huge stress on the body and obesity is part of actually stress. I don't want to talk about stress anymore, but you can see how it goes, right? And the last one, it's fatty liver disease. Just remember that the liver is the organ that the biggest filter 
for our body toxins, right? So if you got all above and you got fatty liver disease, the chances of beating cancer getting uh, pretty low. So look, research suggests, and there was a lot of control, double blinded study control groups done that people on ketogenic diet, full control ketogenic diet, were beating cancer in 90% after their treatment. That's a success rate that I wish everyone, I don't wish cancer on anyone, but 90% success rate of curing cancer after medical intervention on top, sub, uh, supported by keto diet, 90%, it's pretty good um, uh, success rate. So please take care, share this video with people that you love, share this video that you think could be helpful to, and if you like this video or any other video on my channel, please click the red subscribe button, click to receive notification and please like so we can promote this video so many people will hear truth and can help themselves uh, for better lifestyle and um, uh, understanding uh, their bodies. Thank you so much for watching. Greg from Brisbane. Until next time.